back to the Good Morning Show, WBOK 1230 AM. What New Orleans is talking about. Man, first of all, thank you all, man. Uh, we're starting to see some residuals, man, from folk who are investing in and supporting and sponsoring, man. Uh, if you want to advertise on investing what Equity Media is doing here, uh, call 504-582-9420, 504-582-9420. Uh, uh, oh, man, Brother Jawad and all of our contributors, thank you all. I want to thank Ben Castro. Again, uh, every now and then when you have conversations about what's needed, uh, people who come up with a way to help. And uh, Freedom Rides and uh, Ben Castro uh, and Ideal Markets and all the folk who are sponsoring that effort to help ex-offenders, man, get access to transportation. That is a solution. When you, but when you also when you talk about solutions, Jawad just talked about uh, uh, doing business around the world. Well, one of our next guests, along with his dad and uh, Tommy Peters, uh, Damon B- Batiste, man, with, through Nosacon and South African Connection, and the Batiste family, man, have been performing around the world, bringing our culture uh, for years. Guys, welcome. Uh, first of all, welcome back, uh, uh, Damon and Papa Batiste. Welcome back to the Good Morning Show. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. And, 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 and Papa, I hope if you don't mind, but, you know, uh, uh, when Brother Jawad talked about investing internationally and using cultural relationships, very few people from here understand that better than Damon. Damon, if you were listening to the conversation, uh, how do we do more of that? How do we strengthen where we are? And, and how do even the shortcomings here in America, how do we position ourselves to take greater advantage of, uh, of multicultural opportunities throughout the globe? Well, one of the things I want to say is uh, thank you to Equity Media. Thank you to WBOK. And uh, most of all, thank you to my uh, father, David Baptiste, the Baptiste fathers and sons and the family, and also Mr. Tommy Peters, uh, that's been an expert in promoting uh, music, arts, yeah. and culture yeah. uh, with the brand of B.B. Kings uh, that has uh, created the Bill Street um, entity of cultural tourism. And I thought that this was a great time to have this call because of the uh, the virtual Mardi Gras that we did with um, Mardi Gras for all y'all that so far it's just received about 1.6 million awesome. views. Awesome. And we have to think digi- digitally and we have to think international. And it's kind of fitting, Oliver, because you was with us yes. in South Africa. And I can remember you, like yesterday, saying, man, y'all got y'all selves a concert. We was in King <laughs> Park Stadium. That was actually the... Um, that was the semifinals location for the World Cup yeah. in 2010. Yeah, so the guy with the dolphins in the swimming pool. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and uh, wow. We just got to keep doing what we're doing, and people have to support us. Yeah, there's no, there's no doubt about that. Uh, well, uh, you, you're right, Damon. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, Papa Baptiste, man. Before we get to Tommy Peters, uh, uh, when Black History meets culture, you've been one of our contributors for years. Uh, you, your life, absolutely. Uh, your life has represented the, not only the brilliance of New Orleans, but the brilliance of Black culture throughout the world. How important is this issue, and how important is it that we make sure that it doesn't get diluted in this 21st century mix uh, that we maintain our culture, Black culture and our excellence? Papa Batiste. Well, one of the things is family, and, and having the, the the family. I heard you guys talk about it earlier. Pass on. You want to be like your daddy. You want to be like your mama. Yeah. So suppose your mother was a great chef. You want to get into that business. Suppose your father was a well-known worldly musician. Would you want to be in that business? Uh, suppose uh, you know uh, the people around you. Your uncles are school teachers. Uh, would you want to be in that? What, what the child is surrounded by. So I was surrounded by my father, who bought a piano from a white lady on Oak Street. Mm-hmm. And brought it to uh, where I'm standing right now. Not not where I'm standing, but on the street, Camberon Street, from Oak Street to Camberon Street. That's the first piano we started banging on and started learning about looking at music and listening. And my daddy's uncle, excuse me, my uncle Peter, Peter Baptiste, my daddy's brother. He would come and play on the piano, and I never could figure out what that song was. He was saying, "Oh Lord, He Lord." You hurt me so bad. I swear to God. <laughs> and then it come yeah. to find out that he was playing Word Life Blues by Ray Charles. So I learned that by the people that was around me. And to keep that extended, you know, some of the fathers have children by other, you know, multiple children by multiple ladies, let's be frank. You still have to be in those children's lives. And I can say that because I have 14. And I know the hardships and what it would take to still be and how your pockets would almost be empty all the time. <laughs> right. But your children would love you. And the, even the women that had your children 
would have respect for you. So if you keep that bond going, you can pass that on, and the men be strong about being men around the children that they bring into the world with the women, that would help too. Uh, uh, the Tommy Peters man, uh, uh, gosh, one of the keepers of the, the cultural flame that worked from Dr. Bill, Bill Street uh, with, with uh, the president of the B.B. King Blues uh, uh, club chain, man, uh, uh, Black History and Black Culture. Uh, it's more than just Black History Month. I notice you guys don't say month. Uh, black history, uh, when it meets black culture, is also world culture, right, Tommy Peters? You're absolutely right, Oliver, and thank thank you for, for allowing me to be on your show. You. I'm I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, all my life. I'm in Memphis, and you know we're two sister cities on the river, and uh, we view New Orleans as a global world music city, and y'all. Y'all understand music tourism, and you know Memphis. Uh, we we have the same thing. It's just a little little different vibe up here. Right, right. Uh, but but, but uh, the, the black culture. Uh, you know, I, first of all, someone. One of my great trips was to the Civil Rights Museum, uh, the Lorraine Hotel, uh, hanging out on Beale Street, where uh, uh, Tommy. It was interesting, man, how many New Orleans musicians, right, that were entertaining up on Bill Street. So it's more than just a sister, sister city relationship. Uh, we have a working relationship when it comes to New Orleans and Bill Street and Memphis, correct? We really do. We really do. We, uh, you, you know, Breeze, uh, he he plays at another one of our places yeah. called Lafayette's Music Room yeah. every week. Yeah. And, uh, 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 Terrence Simeon's daughter, uh-huh. Marcella, Marcella Simeon, she's there. But we've had a lot of great New Orleans musicians move up to Memphis, and I think we got some Memphis Memphis down there too. Uh, and again, and Papa Baptiste and Damon, before y'all jump back in, man, I tell a funny story about uh, BB King. Uh, you know, I'm an outdoorsman, man. I love hunting and fishing. Uh, picked it up from my uncles, and then my relationship with Jim Singleton as I got older. And loved being in the woods, and there would be some deep woods places I would go, uh, prof, with some stories that that uh, around folk and around cultures that you know you don't see. Being a little boy coming from the Lord Ninth Ward, and I remember being in the deep woods, uh, uh, Tommy Peters of Alabama, around some folk I didn't understand. You know, I saw some uh, flags that I didn't agree with some places, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, 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 I was with some fellas, man that uh, I'll never forget B.B. King was coming to perform in New Orleans. And, you know, because they were, we were guests that the, 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 they were hosting us in terms of hunting and our outdoor activity, I asked them, I said, hey, man, you know, if I could ever do anything for you guys, man, we'd love to extend the same hospitality in New Orleans. And I'll never forget uh, both of them saying, well, yeah, there's something you can we love us some BB King, <laughs> 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 and, and 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 when it comes to race and differences around here, BB is the great equalizer. Uh, isn't that that just not a great example of uh, Black history and culture, and especially the the music man, uh, how we can mitigate even differences, Tommy? Absolutely, the music brings us together, and. Uh, you know, that's what I saw early on. I I can't play any music, and uh, I can't cook or anything, but the city of Memphis asked me 31 years ago to help get B.B. King's open to hopefully revitalize Beale Street. Mm-hmm. And I've always loved music, and I was a CPA, didn't know what I was doing, and a lot of people still say, well, he still doesn't know what he's doing, but... but uh, uh, we were able to get it open, and and it it uh, you know, I'd always wanted to be able to do that, do the same thing in New Orleans, and you know we were blessed to be able to to get where the Margaritaville building was next to the French markets, mm-hmm. and uh, but getting back to your point, Oliver, you know in Memphis. Um, B.B. King's, to me, has just been a total blessing because the music brings everybody together. And total diversity, uh, people having fun, no tension. I mean, just, you know, it's a spiritual thing. 
And I wish the rest of the world could do this. I mean, because it does get us together. And it's so important to get music back in New Orleans. It, it is, it is. But what we're not talking about is, is the black exploitation of our culture and our musicians. That a lot of times in order for um, black musicians to have access, they had to go through someone white. And, and it's not a secret that many of our um, white mus- black musicians in Memphis, in New Orleans, and other places have been exploited by having to participate or go through white agents um, to make records and, and be, be heard in, in the travel and everything else. Talk about the, the white exploitation of our black musicians and our black culture. And, and, and how do you mitigate that in terms of equity uh, and opportunity financially, uh, Damon? Well, I think um, I would like to speak on that. Um, as uh, I don't know if anybody ever ever seen or met me before, but I happen to be a black man mm-hmm. uh, from New Orleans, and I'm 53 years old, and I have worked for um, white white producers. I've worked in the, in the past with Quint Davis with the Jazz and Heritage Festival. I worked with uh, Warren Ruther uh, with the Creole Queen, and uh, many people around the world. And sometimes that is true, but Sometimes the black people are our own worst enemies because we don't trust each other. And it's, uh, it, you know, if you read the, the Willie Lynch papers, uh, it seems like there's still a lot of those stigmatisms that is, exist in friends and families, and you almost need a white person to eat, to open a door up for people to trust you. Unfortunately, America has set up some of those uh, uh, underlying policies which we are trying to break. So um, it's uh, it's almost like, you you know, look at Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson. They didn't have black agents. They have white agents. Look at all the TV shows. Look what happened to Mr. Bill Cosby. So if people want to play, you know, a spade, a spade, and also black people have money, why aren't the black people with money investing in some of the musicians in New Orleans? Let's have that conversation. Uh, Damon, I want to jump in right quick because I've been doing this for 59 years. Uh, working with all the different sort of promoters, the white and the black, and this subject. And to keep music happening, uh, I have to give props to all of the black nightclub owners because a lot of those black nightclub owners were the ones that helped promote the black musicians. And a lot of them the club owners, uh, 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 such as on the Mason Strip and the White as Devil's Den, Club 77, and other places, sprung musicians off to do stuff. And to work with white producers, I had white guys in the band that used to sneak across the track from what is River Ridge, but it's Little Falls, right there between the Airline Highway and the Jefferson Highway. And they would sneak over to come play with David Baptiste and the Gladiators at the risk of being killed. They would come over and play. I had uh, a drummer. There was a white guy in the band. His name was Billy Oldenwald, the first white guy to play in the band to play in Little Falls. So the music was bringing people together. There are there are there are, are are people, as my son would say, that you know would wonder. I, I I had to try and play at a place called the Autocraft Club. They used to tell me you used to have to be a certain skin color as a black mm-hmm. to get into the Autocraft Club. Mm-hmm. Also, I tr- I've been trying for since Philip Baptiste signed for my young sons to play at seven and nine years old to follow me around in nightclub protected nightclub owners and my son i've been dealing with the zulu organization and they told me that we were not big enough to perform for the zulu ball <laughs> they told me it wasn't big enough now they probably don't even pay my nephew enough money to be a part of that so we've been dealing with black people that's been harder in some cases when we're trying to come out what about a father just told the world i have 14 kids in different situations they're, all the kids are connected. One of them is the vice president of the bank. The other one is a doctor. Another one is the world producer and everything else. Why not help me? We had a school named after us. I'm a first living black man to have a K-8 school named after me, thanks to my son, one of my sons. David B.R. Baptiste Cultural Arts Academy. I performed for President Obama in, uh, at the White House. I mean, excuse me, Michelle Obama at the White House as her special guest. I brought seven kids out of this neighborhood. That sound like Whitney Houston, Sade, John Legend, Sam Cooke. They stole Michelle Obama's heart. They made us the, 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 the special guest. I, I directed President Obama's Marine Band in the White House. Also, 
Plumbo and Shorty and Alfred Woodard helped to get us to the White House because they gave me the information, David, you're going to be bringing the kids to the White House. That's connection. That's how our people help each other. But a lot of that stuff here, when you have to throw the stick in the room and whoever could come out with the stick in the room could carry the torch, carry fire that might burn you and burn your eyes out, but you're going to fight each other to death for this one stick to march in the parade to make you feel like you're somebody. We've been having to go through a whole bunch of overt, covert stuff. But God bless you, Tommy Peters. When I first met you, you told me you were a different kind of person. You have proved that. You have proved that to me. You've worked with my well, son. I'm honored to speak to you. Well, and I'm a, you know, I'm, I, I am a white person, okay? Tommy Peters, and, president of B.B. King's uh, Blue and, Club chain. Tommy yeah. Peters. And, Are you sure you're white, Tommy? I'm a white. I, I'm a white guy. And, uh, All right. I, was, I was the only white pallbearer at B.B. Stevie's general, and uh, he uh, he was a very amazing man. Uh, now, David, he had fifteen children by by fifteen <laughs> different ladies, <laughs> and, and that's one of the reasons he had to perform until he was. He was plucking them cords. Keep paying everybody. But, <laughs> but, uh, he uh, he's a wonderful guy, and I had the good fortune to be able to travel with him around the world. And, and uh see different things and he uh uh he was great and early on on beale street i mean under you know growing up in memphis and uh i'm i'm 66 years old so i'm not not uh, well i'm still young and, <laughs> absolutely uh, yes you are uh, yes you are but i grew up like you know, seeing things from a, a different perspective than y'all. And, you know, when I first first opened BB's, uh, nobody wanted to invest in it because Beale Street had been a total failure up until then. And one of the first people that I brought in with me was a guy named David Porter, who was one of the top songwriters at Stax. David, yes. David was yes. Isaac Hayes' songwriting partner. Yes. And I, yes. I felt like it was important to have African-American ownership with me. And uh, David is still in Memphis, still doing great and wonderful guy. And, uh, you know, my, um, my, one of my attorneys is a guy named Walter Bailey, who actually, and he's African-American, Damon's met him up in Memphis and Walter went to Southern University, played linebacker for him, and our criminal justice complex is named the Walter Bailey uh, uh, Justice Center. Now uh, he, uh, uh, I'll give you a little a little history. I mean, it's it's incredible how he is now, and he's a wonderful, wonderful man. And uh, you know, if you look. If you look back at the history of Stax records, I mean, the original house band was Booker T and the MGs, and it was two, Steve, it was two, two white people and two black musicians. Steve Crop, yes. uh, Duck Dunn, yep. and Al Jackson on drums, and Booker T on keyboards, organ. So it, you know, that, and that, that started back in the early 60s, and that was unusual, but. You know, the best things happen when you give everybody an opportunity to reach their maximum potential. And uh, sometimes, you know, you're, you know, it's amazing how well you can do if you can put together a team. And you know, because everybody's got strengths and weaknesses, right. and uh, my job is to get the best people for the job no matter what color they are, but color is a factor. I mean, it's just, it's human nature. And our general manager in Memphis has been with us about 16 years. His name is Nelson McNeil. Um, he rose, he, he had been a, an assistant, and he, he's African-American. And when the lady who was the manager before him, she's still with, with us too, she became one of our directors of operation, Nelson rose up, and BB's wasn't doing quite as well. Well, 
I learned, I said, well, I'm not going to fire Nelson because he's good. What I did, I brought in some people under him that could do what he was weaker at then. Now he's my strongest general manager. But you just got to, you got to help people put, and put them in a position to reach their potential. Damon Batiste, uh, uh, you, you have proven having uh, black history and black culture and having allies, uh, whether they African, Chinese, white, or from other communities, uh, from South America. Uh, Damon, you've been uh, one of those uh, cultural, uh, uh, even as a young man, cultural icons. The importance of when black history meets black culture, but also allies in creating opportunity. Damon, how important is that? Honestly, Oliver, because I'm I'm speaking of uh, people that I like and I trust. I mean, I know who you are. Uh, I've, I actually wish that you would have been the mayor of New Orleans at one one time, but uh, you know God had a different plan for you. Yeah. But I do think that this conversation could be a global and world conversation, and this structure and all the questions that we can make this into a series, we can make this into a documentary, because there's no way we're going to answer all the questions in a one- or two-hour conversation. Right. But it's so important. It's actually, um, during the pandemic, it could be our way to road to recovery, because you're speaking to people with experience, with, uh, with wellness, with consciousness, with perseverance, with persistence, and with uh, economic policies that could help out, you know, the black communities, the, the uh, Hispanic communities, the Asian communities, and help out the racial relationships between white and black people. And that's how we should uh, look at things. And it's a very, very important conversation, and that's why I called your station and asked. Another thing is um, some of my other family members who actually started with my father, with David Batista and the Gladiators, they said, well, why not title the show and, and feature on the Batiste brothers, the Batiste family? And so I just said, hey, hey, I don't control the media. I can't tell everybody what to do because some people think, Alva, I'm in control of everything. <laughs> and that's a problem for me because people think I own everything, right. which I don't. Right. You know, And well, I don't have the influence to tell everybody to do everything I tell them. But I do have the influence over Damon Batiste, and I have had influence in Asia. I'm a Rotarian. I've worked with black people, white people, Spanish people. I worked in townships in Africa. I've wrote million dollar grants. I've created schools. I've brought billions of dollars into Louisiana as Bobby Jindal as support. But I'm a black man, so uh, my thing is, color should not be uh, the thing that defines you. What should define you is, as you say, the team that you could put around you to make something better. And we're still stuck on race even in 2021. Damon Batista, we have a uh, first time caller, Mr. Archie, the voice, you're on with uh, with our panel. Mr. Archie, you're on. The voice is on. How we doing, my brother? We doing great, Good Mr. Archie. Good to hear Archie. y'all. Um, I have a history you, that goes with the Batiste fan. Um, my history with them uh, actually starts with Damon's dad. Yes. Uh, at the age of 14, I go into St. Augustine, and by this, that spring, I start emceeing every talent show at St. Augustine. Well, in 1965 would be the year that David and the Gladiators would go on to the Power Theater and win the talent show. Um, that association with their dad, who said to me that I had something special, but I was going to have a hard time because I was doing something that African Americans weren't known for. Right. So um, I would precede my Baptiste family in South Africa. And what I mean by that is I'm the only specialty performer in New Orleans who ever performed at every major place in South Africa, wow. following the Supremes one week later, but while I was on tour with Dolby Grain, the main ingredient. Wow. So, uh, so then I come to do some shows here at home as my mother was dying of cancer. And Bob D. Murphy tells me about this young brother he has working with me. And be known to me, it's Damon Batiste. So we start doing what is the original Trimay Festival, which was then called the Neighborhood Development Economic Bay. And then we changed it. So what has followed years later is not the original festival, just for the record. Okay? So that worked with Damon early on. About 75% every international thing that David has done, I've been the master ceremony for. I'm kind of like Damon and his dad's secret 
and I'm kind of like the secret in New Orleans in that I'm the most accomplished. I'm famous humbly, but it's all true. And no doubt. On paper and in fact, I'm no the doubt. most accomplished spiritual performance master ceremony in the history of Louisiana and the United States. I'm the only MC. The only one has only had three. One would be Miss Pixie, a cross dresser in the heydays of Rampart Street, who yep. there was dad with no of. All right. Uh, Anybody who's ever, ever emceed a program and in, invent in New Orleans, they, they all wanted to grow up and be like the voice, Archie, man. Archie, Absolutely. we appreciate you times 10, life. man. God bless you. Uh, man, how, y'all, how you like that, Papa Baptiste? You never know who's listening or call in the good morning. So, Papa Baptiste, we only got a few minutes, few minutes left. Uh, 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 Tommy, anything you'd like to add before we close out this segment? Well, I would just hope that we can get this pandemic behind us soon so that we can get more reopened. And I just want to, I, um, you know, a lot of people come to you, and I'm very blessed to have met Damon and David. And I'm, I'm, I talk to Damon every day. And the you know, one thing that's great about Damon is I trust Damon. And it's all about, it is, he brought it up, it's about being able to trust people, and I trust him because over the last year and a half, he always does what he says he's going to do. And uh, we, I think we have a mutual respect, and I just, I, I just pray that uh, we get this pandemic behind us so people can get back to some normalcy and uh, reopen new, the great musical city of new orleans tommy peters can't wait for you to come back and be on the show and we host you here in new orleans man we can't wait for that damon baptiste uh before we let give papa baptiste a minute to uh to close out uh damon anything you want to add uh, yes i would like to say that uh um we are we are committed right now to doing some women empowerment initiatives and some workforce development initiatives with the city of new orleans and the culture economy uh mm-hmm. they embrace the culture series as well as uh, the Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungazer and culture tourism. And I think we plan to use the great brand of V.B. Kings to, to expand it more globally. And the, the Baptiste family brand, the Baptiste uh, fathers and sons, and I would love to one day uh, have a, a reunion with my uncles, the Baptiste brothers, that would include uh, all the many Baptistas that have uh, graced the, the, the stages and let people know that New Orleans has been a great family to uplift Throughout musical the world. families as in the Neville families, the Andrews family, right. the Baptiste family, no the, um, well, the gospel family. Now, Trump, that's, a, con- that's a concert I want to go to. That's a good one right there. That's a good one right there. David Baptiste and the Gladiators. Hey, hey Damon. Neville wants to tell that story. Damon, now you got to make that happen. <laughs> you don't get our hopes up. you got to make that one happen, man. You well, make- let, let's do it. I'll, you the man. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, work with, um, I work with Mr. Troy Henry. He's yeah. a businessman. Maybe I'll call up Troy. <laughs> hey, hey, man, all I know is that's a concert and a connection with you. Papa Baptiste, take us home, man. Anything you want to add? Before we close out this segment, while we prepare for one of the greatest concerts of all time that Damon's going to put together for us. Papa Baptiste. Well, peace and blessings to everybody. I hope, like Thomas said, everybody gets uh, through this pandemic, do what they feel like they need to do about getting shots. I've gotten both of my shots have been vaccinated. And um, my, my baby daughter, who's a doctor at Tulane University, she a uh, doctor of clinical psychology, she broke the ice and got vaccinated first. So when my baby daughter dove in i had to go in with her so we want to get through with this where we can get back to live entertainment uh bring families together all of the families all of the races because as Thomas said that's what the music did i played with a lot of those artists out of memphis uh from ann peebles uh, uh um you know the bar Kays, isaac Hayes, you know uh William Bell, Papa Batiste. You know, I down the line, Tommy. I, I worked with all of them. We had, they needed a good rhythm section, like Booker T, like Duck and, and, and the Jack Jackson. The rhythm section that was David Batiste and the Gladiators. That's thank, why we got all of those gigs. 
back in the fall those different artists. Thank you, Papa so Batista. Uh, family uh, together. Uh, My brother Paul wrote a song called yeah. Family. Uh, uh, family. Damon, is there a phone that number means, or, or email family. or connection, Damon, for people to follow you? Yes, uh, people can go to uh, they can go to Nosacon, which is n o s a c o n n dot com, or you can go to bbkings dot com, b b k i n g s dot com, and. Uh, Give us a call and let us know how you want to support us. Tommy Peters from Beale Street all the way to Bourbon in New Orleans, man. Basin Street. Damon Baptiste, man, thank you for what you're doing internationally. And Papa Baptiste, guess what? Hey, man, we got to name something after you while you're still here. Thank you for your contributions yeah. to culture thank and music. You. Prof, what a great show, man. Great. Coming up, man, we got Courtney <laughs> P, Jazz, Graylin on the porch, and uh, Lord Nightwater, Ro Brown. Ro Brown, we we could hey man, hey, every day is Ro Brown Day. Y'all have a wonderful week.